It's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. It can go anywhere in time and space, and sometimes even where it's meant to go. It's time to begin our journey back in time. But before we can turn our dials and pull some levers, we need to know where we're going. The ancient Near East is a vast area that was home to countless people and cultures. Where and when should we go? Although we won't have blue switches and blinking lights that will take us where we want to go, we have Dr. Mark van der Merop, an ancient historian who wrote a guidebook for our journey back in time. He has marked off the boundaries of exploration, both geographically and chronologically. In this book, the ancient Near East will include the areas from Turkey to Iran and from northern Anatolia to the Red Sea. The primary focus of our investigation, however, will be Mesopotamia, or the land between the two rivers. We must further delineate the chronological period that will be covered, from roughly 3000 BCE, essentially the beginning of writing, to 331 BCE, when Alexander the Great made his great conquest. During this period, the millennia can be divided up into three main time periods. These are centered on how the land was ruled. First, from approximately 3000 to 1600 BCE, the land was essentially made up of individual city-states, ruled most often by local rulers. There are periodic exceptions to this, of course, but this was the general rule. From roughly 1600 to 1000, we see broader areas being ruled as territorial states, who formed a type of international club, complete with regular diplomatic interaction. Finally, from about 1000 until 331, we enter the period of empires, first with the Neo-Assyrian, followed by the Neo-Babylonian, and finally the Persian Empire. Before we land our TARDIS in the first historical period, we should hover over the region and get an idea of its geographical layout. To the north and east are great mountain ranges, the Taurus and the Zagros, with the Syrian and Arabian deserts to the south. In the middle flow the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, emptying into the Persian Gulf in the south. Although you might not be able to tell, there was a great deal of ecological variation in ancient Mesopotamia, with desert plateau in the north, allowing for agriculture in river valleys. An alluvial plain in the middle, consistently shifting canals to the south of the city of Babylon, and even marshes in the far south, complete with fish, fowl, reeds, and so on. Natural boundaries made movement difficult at times, but certainly not impossible. Travel through mountain ranges was possible through river valleys, and Mesopotamians often believed that hostile or uncontrollable people groups inhabited the mountains. The Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf were traversed as early as the 5th millennium, ultimately allowing for travel to places like the Indus Valley. Finally, around 1000 BCE, the camel was domesticated, making it possible, although not common, for people to traverse the great deserts. Well, there you have it. We know where and when we're going, and what the terrain will look like when we get there. I suppose all that is left to say is, come along, pond.